Hello everybody, my name is Francesca Bonerad and Barry from Barry's On Sub and today we're going to be looking at some more coding. C++ of course. So, what are we going to be learning today? Well, what we're going to be learning is the if statement. So, uh, we're not going to be looking at the vibe uh, board anymore. Oh, hello, I thought you were supposed to be in the calculus series. Whatever. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay. So, what can we do? Oh yeah, so we, we're gonna go to REPL, not it. And, okay. So, Add a new C++ program, Critical Outstanding Relational Database. Okay, so I'm going to go for if statement. Okay, so if statement. Okay, so, so let's start our typing. So, what I'm going to do first is the basic stuff. Thank you for moving that keyboard there and the basic stuff. So, using namespace std, you don't know this, watch the other lectures. did I do anyways okay int main we, we no longer need this so obviously when we print this out it's just gonna say hello world right is it taking so oh did I run it now? oh there we go third time to charm hello world okay so However, if statement going to do something a little different. So let's say I do this. Let's say I define a variable. What variable? Am so I? Uh, now let's say we get we define a variable x. So this is going to be an integer x. And let's say I don't know it's equal to ninety six. 987 because that's the number I like and then we have to put a semicolon after each line as always and then what does that do for us well let's say we uh, pr try and print out what x is so count uh, where's the operator yeah x and then Let's see what it prints out. Play 987. Ignore the hello world. We don't need that. So, however, let's say we have an if statement. So we have an if statement. This is how it works. You put if and then some parentheses. Uh, here's the first thing you can do. Let's say we do 67 is equal equal 56. Now you might be thinking, why do we need two equals? Why can't we use just one? Well, that's a very good question. A very good one. But it also has a very simple answer. Here's the answer to this sort of paradox. Well, because when you use one equal, the thing is when you use one equal, then the computer thinks you're defining a variable. But you can't define a variable inside an if statement. That doesn't work with C++. 
So if you use one, then that's gonna be going in the trash bin. This is why you need to use two. If you use two, the C++ program uh, says, oh, oh, I know what this guy is doing. This guy is trying to make a comparison between two numbers in an if statement. And so two of these uh, guys are necessary. One is too little. And now what you have to do is this. But what does equal equal do? Well, it's comparing two numbers. It's seeing if two numbers, like this and, I don't know, that, are equal. It's testing if those are equal to each other. And so, uh, when we do this, it's saying, if 67 is equal to 56, then do something. And what is that something that a computer needs to do? Well, it's inputted in two brackets, two curve, uh, curved brackets, as shown here. So, uh, let's say it says, um, uh, okay. So let's say it says, there's the operator, and then slash n. This is an extraneous long, uh, line of text. So then, I can put the semicolon I need to. And then, when I put it over here, on 987, but it doesn't say this is an extraneous line of text. Why? Well, because 67 is not equal to 56. I hope you know that. However, if we say, say, put, say, I don't know, 67 is equal to 67, this will work like magic. 67. And it's going to say, this is an extraneous line of text. See? There are also other ways to compare things. There, uh, these include greater than, in which you only need one greater than sign, less than, in which you also only need one less than sign, greater than or equal to, which is represented in C++ like this, then you have less than or equal to as well, and finally, you have not equal to. So we're going to be testing that all out as well. So, let's say we put 67 is equal to 68, but we say, what if it's not equal to 68? Then print this text. How do we say it's not equal to 68? Well, you put an exclamation mark and then the equal to sign. Now, if we run it, it works like magic. But if we say, put, say, if 67 is not equal to 67, then it won't print because 67 is equal to 67. Thus, the condition is not fulfilled. See, only two lines of code print. The third one doesn't. When you put less than or equal to, um, then it will show up because 67 is equal to to 67 and if you put six it also will show up it also will show up 
because 66 is, oh yeah, 67 is less than or equal to 6. That doesn't work because 67 is not less than 6. Wherefore, if we put 677, then what do we get? We get, uh, this is an extraneous line of text because 677 is much obviously greater than 67 or 67 is less than 677. Now, we can also test greater than. So, uh, where was the that sign good? And since 67 is gr not gr greater than uh, 677, it won't print. But if we say we put seven, then it will print because 67 is greater than seven. And as always, if 67 is uh, greater than or equal to 67, this will print because 67 is equal to 67. So those are all the ways to compare them but there are also ways to put variables in them. So this is the last concept we'll explore. How do we, instead of putting numbers, put variables in their place? Well, it's actually surprisingly easy to do. Let's say we put X here instead of 67. Since we have a name for x, it's 987. What does that give us? Oh my god. Why won't it work when I press it with the pen, but everything else works? And you can see, since 987 is greater than or equal to 7, it's not equal to 7, I'll tell you that. It, uh, it will print. And if we put 987 in there, it also will print because they're equal to each other. Now, all the other rules with uh, them work the same, like the not equal to and stuff, all those with variables work the same, but there's one more possibility. Let's say we take a integer y. Actually, I can do this. x equal 987, y is equal to uh, 45, I'll guess. And then when we put, uh, let's say we put this. If x is greater than or equal to y, then you get this. This is an extraneous line of text because x is greater than y. And if we set x equal to y, on the way, then, what, what did I just do? If we said x equals to y on the way, then it's going to give us the same thing because obviously x is now equal to y. See? And this is really how you can do it. So let's summarize what we learned before we end today. What we learned is that there are about six different types of things you can do in an if statement. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, and equal to. And we also learned that there are three possibilities for what you can put in a uh, there. You can either put one variable and one number. You can put both of them as numbers or you can put both of them as variables. And that's what we've learned today. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is a math and science organization. It also it has millions of courses on whatever you would desire. 
Join Brilliant today. If you want co uh, math courses, here they are. Geometry courses, here they are. Want to even learn more about coding there? Here they are. So, join Brilliant today. And you can, uh, the first 1,000 people to join Brilliant will get a 20% off using the code of uh, Barry Science Lab that we have prepared for uh, our dedicated viewers. Thank you, everybody. Bye.